Hello everyone, welcome to a fresh performance test of RSS Reborn in Kerbal Space Program 1.12.5. RSS Reborn is a visual package by Ballistic Fox that includes textures for all the planets and especially for Earth. Uh, the Earth textures at their maximum uh, are 7 gigabytes, so bigger than the original game uh, if you want to use those, but there are also lighter packages if you don't think uh, your system can handle that because all those textures go into RAM and my video RAM is filled up right now. I've got an RTX 2070 with 8 gigabytes of RAM and I also have 64 gigabytes of system RAM. Of that, 42 gigabytes are being used by Kerbal Space Program right now. So pretty serious stuff. I have an i5 12600 Okay, and this is a performance test because Ballistic Fox has updated RSS Reborn and made some performance improvements compared to when I last did a video on it and my last video had serious issues with performance so I felt obligated to do an update because well it, it might not have shown RSS Reborn in the best light so we will see how it goes with the latest improvements. Um, but not only will we have uh, one version where I tested that with volumetric clouds as we see here and you'll see how that looks and how that performs with the space shuttle that we have here. But also I will have a version without the volumetric clouds. I have an install without the volumetric clouds but the good earth textures and so we'll see how that does with just the regular 2D clouds. So here we go. The shuttle, as always, is a fairly lightweight vehicle in terms of performance hit, actually, because a lot of the components are integrated, right? The RCS is integrated and stuff like that, so it's not too bad. Most other rockets would perform worse than the shuttle, particularly Dark Cloud here. As currently the timer is in green, well, getting yellow a little bit, but in green means that it's running in real time, otherwise there's physics lag, meaning that it's taking more time in real time than in game time. But we are right there past the speed of sound and throttling down. Nice clouds, the clouds are looking good right there. But as we go higher, the performance is going to get worse inevitably. The question is whether it's playable at uh, altitude once we get to space. Last time I had to do a bunch of stuff to make it sort of playable, but not really playable. One thing you could do is make videos with it, and at least as a video creator, you could speed up the video in, say, Sony Vegas or something like that, as long as it's not more than four times the factor it's doable but you wouldn't want to play it like that for sure so we'll see hopefully it's a lot better oh I, I'm still using the same craft file so I didn't fix the separatron this time around uh, well we'll always have the boosters doing pirouettes I suppose so yeah, when it comes to big visual packages for Kerbal Space Program 1, everything goes into RAM. So if you don't have enough RAM, either the game just isn't going to load, or it's going to shove things into your page file, uh, your swap file. The swap file is very slow because it's running off of your hard drive. So if you find that things are really super slow, uh, it might be because you don't have enough system RAM to run the visual stuff that you've got. Which is why I have 64 gigabytes of system RAM. Uh, it's only for Kerbal Space Program, really. <laughs> it's, that, that's the only thing that needs it. And practically for running a mod package like this. Hopefully I can do some nice videos with this. Uh, I would like it to perform at a certain pace for me to do that. But boy, the, look, the clouds look good, don't they? I mean, those are some serious clouds right there. We'll see how they look in space, though. That's a separate issue. Sometimes they look good in flight, but they end up not looking quite as good in space. We're getting close to space, though. And I think it's performing a lot better, but you'll note that the timer is getting in yellow more now. It's better if you point at the ground because it's really the horizon and there have been improvements to that 
according to Ballistic Fox's patch notes. So it's better here and here it's more solidly yellow. But it's still pretty good right now. This is tolerable. Of course I've been conditioned to, well really by old flight sims where the frame rate and the physics, well the physics rate wasn't so bad, the frame rate was horrible. And also old days in KSP. I think maybe the dividing line for KSP players might be those who remember the days when KSP was limited to 4 gigabytes of RAM. <laughs> and in that case, it was hard. Those were hard days. Those were hard days back then. We were all contemplating using Linux because Linux didn't have the 4 gigabyte limitation. And so I actually had a Linux partition to try and play KSP like that. That didn't work out very well, actually. Mainly because Linux didn't like my joystick, I think. Still reasonable, though. Again, with a rocket that has a lot more parts, it'll be worse. Though maybe not that much worse. 24 parts only right now. So keep that in mind. Okay, we are now in space. Things have slowed down quite a lot suddenly, actually. Right on that transition. In space clouds, well, uh, if we wait a little bit, it might be okay. Because whenever it goes into space, it takes a little bit of time. But yeah, the in space clouds are definitely worse. This aiming straight down, it's all yellow now. But not red. I guess that's good. In the previous video, I played around with the EVE settings. And if we take a look at the Raymarch Clouds Quality Manager, it's at 16x right now, which I think is what I shifted it to. I think I might have gone even with 32x. Ultimately, how I'm going to measure this is how long it actually takes to get into orbit. It's basically 2 to 1 right now two real seconds to one in-game second. And at least for my version, an old version of Sony Vegas, the sort of compression limit is 4x, so you can squish your video by four times. And it'll preserve the pitch of the sounds, but the chatterer stuff, that would get distorted, of course. The pitch of the engines would be fine. The chatterer would not survive being squished like that. Well, it's more like 3 to 1 right now. Using 32k textures for Earth might be a little bit kinder. They're, I think, only about 2 gigabytes compared to the 7 gigabytes for the 64k textures. And again, the 64k textures are therefore larger than the actual game of Kerbal Space Program 1, so yeah. You can also get 64k textures for the Moon and Mars. I do not have those in here. Basically, in this install, I have the best textures for Earth and then the worst available textures for everything else because this is mostly for the shuttle. Incidentally, the shell is carrying a sort of nominal payload to the ISS orbit. That's what we're going for here as it shuts down there. Uh, we are basically 15 minutes since launch, so yeah, that's a while considering it's supposed to be 8 minutes. But it is not as bad as the previous version. And again, we'll see how it does without the volumetric clouds for comparison. Go into time warp, yeah. And then circularize. But I'm really pushing things here. This is the best of the best that we can get, basically. It may be a little bit more advisable to tone things down. One nice thing about the better textures, though, is the accuracy of the sea lights. They look a lot better and are more in the correct place. 
Okay, so that's southern Italy there. I think that must be... Is that Naples or Rome? Everything's really dark over there. But that's Sicily and that's the boot of Italy and... That's Greece, I think. This OMS burn is going to take longer than usual though, that's for sure. We'll see the earth textures in daylight, just so you get an idea of what uh, this kind of texture package can give you. This is how it looks in map view with the clouds. Very sophisticated looking clouds for sure. And here we are approaching North America again. And you can see Baja California there. And then Mexico, the coastlines are fairly crisp up here compared to the regular RSS packages. But yeah, performance still raggedy. The ground textures are quite compelling though. And the ground textures are basically what I wanted. So the question is whether I could get by with the non-volumetric clouds instead of these volumetric clouds and what performance I could get if I could use the 64K textures with the non-volumetric clouds and we are going to find out because Ballistic Fox sort of fixed up the package so that it wouldn't interfere with the regular RSS visual enhancements clouds and so now we can use them and I've got an install ready for that so let's check that out. Okay so here we are without volumetric clouds. This version is taking 34 gigabytes of my system RAM versus 42 with the volumetric clouds which is an interesting impact from the volumetric clouds when you think about it. Uh, but in any case, we will launch the shuttle and see how it goes. Uh, otherwise, the install should be the same. Uh, the mods should be the same. The other scenery should be the same, including RSS Cape Canaveral, of course. Uh, so let us see how it goes. nearly real time as expected of course and here comes the cloud layer just for comparison's sake they do a pretty good illusion of being volumetric I mean they're not bad or anything and we are above them It is still the 70 gigabyte uh, earth textures. The coastline seems more serrated than I expected though. Hmm. In total, the RSS texture folder is 12.8 gigabytes. And again, that's because for everything else, I use the smallest available ones. So all the other ones combined are 5.8 gigabytes less than the earth textures. Off the boosters go. But with the boosters gone, we're green basically because, well, we have fewer parts and there's very little else causing any sort of physics lag, which is what that's measuring. The time lag between real time and the game. Here at 100 kilometers, there's sort of a barrier here. You can see it pause for a sec because it's basically loading another set of stuff. And looking back at the terrain there, it's sort of nice how the cape blends in with the rest of Florida with these textures. It stands out a little bit more with the regular RSS textures. Okay, we are now in space. And now it is yellow, so you can see, uh, even with these clouds, more modest clouds. Well, right now it's in the sticky part, though, as it's transitioning. We'll wait until it's done. But yeah, even here it has a little bit more trouble in the space than it does in the atmosphere, weirdly enough. Do you think atmospheric calculations would slow down the physics more than being in space does, but... 
is to some extent the visual effects do have their impact. Still, right now we're practically real time, a little bit slower than real time, but pretty darn close. So this is how the clouds look from space with the RSS Visual Enhancements clouds, but there may be uh, better cloud packages even for the 2D clouds. I don't think I put the best available ones in, so that's worth thinking about. But you know, they have a certain charm to them, like we have frame rate, <laughs> so there's that. Okay, so that's the end of that burn. And basically, it took close enough to real time not to make much of a difference. As far as I can tell, it was basically real time. Maybe a few seconds off. And we'll see how the ground textures are, but th that should be the same as it was in the previous install with the volumetric clouds. So we'll double check. Certainly we see here the city lights as before. Still fairly crisp and detailed. You could probably pick out towns with that kind of level of city lights. Again, right now it's actually using 36 gigabytes of RAM. And of my VRAM, it's using all of it. Okay, we are in orbit. And let's go over to the daylight side. Okay, and as we can see, the landscape is nice and crisp with the detailed coastlines. And we can see good detail on the terrain. It's not flight sim, of course, but it's pretty good. So with the RSS Reborn texture packs, the sort of level that we get for Earth and to some extent the Moon and Mars, there are texture packs for the other planets, but they're not quite as good as for those bodies. But Earth is the best, of course. I mean, of course it would be. So as we glide along here, we see that it is performing basically how you would like it to perform in normal gameplay. So yeah, volumetric clouds, still still a tough one for me. I'm sure there are other systems that work better with it, but again, mine's was uh, i5 12600K with uh, 64 gigabytes of RAM and an RTX 2070, so you can judge from there. And so with this being the case, I, I think I'm, I'm glad that there are improvements to the volumetric cloud version. I think maybe I'll be able to put it to better use now. We'll see. But for now, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.